Three months had gone by since he first arrived in Lavala. Newly ordained in July 1816, Father Champagne was assigned as the associate pastor in that small village perched on the side of one of the foothills that surrounded Mount Pillay in southwest France. It was now the end of October and already he was overwhelmed by what he had seen in Lavala. Poverty, broken families, undisciplined kids running the streets, and the list goes on. The turmoil that followed the French Revolution would be felt for decades. It was October 28th when Father Champagne received word that a boy was ill at the outskirts of his parish. Father Champagne left immediately to see about the boy. La Vicette was such an isolated place. Mostly farms, a few houses scattered in the little hamlets. He was headed to the hamlet they called La Palais. Finding the house, he knocked. The boy's grieving mother took Father Champagne to her son. There was little time to lose. He was only 17 years old. After some initial conversation, Father Champagne began preparing the boy to receive the final sacraments by talking to him about God's loving mercy. God, said the boy, who's that? Taken aback, but not really shocked, given the many young people like Jean-Baptiste he had come to know since arriving at Lavala, Father Champagne knew he needed a more basic approach. For the next few hours, they just talked. They talked about Jesus and Mary, the saints, heaven and hell, the sacraments, faith, hope, and God's immeasurable love. It was like teaching the boy his catechism. Even though he had been baptized as a baby, it was all new to the boy. Surprisingly, he was interested and asked questions. Father Champagne could see a transformation coming over him. Jean-Baptiste eventually became more relaxed and less afraid. Sensing the time was right, Father Champagne heard the boy's confession, gave him the Eucharist, and anointed him with oil. Soon after, the boy fell into a deep sleep. Father Champagne left the boy to his sleep. Before leaving the house, he spent some moments comforting the grieving mother. I'll be back later to see how he's doing, Champagne said. This is my first time in this part of the parish. I want to introduce myself to some of the nearby families and get to know who they are. Several hours had passed. True to his word, Father Champagne, before heading down the mountain path that would take him back to Lavala, stopped by the Montagna house to see how the young Jean-Baptiste was doing. It was too late. Oh, Father, said the distraught mother. He died just a few minutes after you had left him. Please pray for him. He was a good boy. It took about two hours to get back to Lavala. He couldn't stop thinking about the dying boy. How would he ever have known about God or God's love for him? He isn't the only one. How many kids have I buried already who knew nothing about our faith? This has to stop. There are so many of them. I can't attend to them all. I need help. As the questions whirled about his head, his steps quickened. That's it. No more waiting. We need brothers. It was an idea that he had while still in the seminary. He and a group of his seminary classmates used to talk about one day forming a religious society dedicated to Mary. They would call themselves the Marist. It was Champagne that insisted within this society there would be a group of teaching brothers who would not only teach the young how to read and write, but also about the faith about Jesus and Mary, and about living a life based on gospel values. It's time, he thought. No more dying kids who are ignorant of their faith. We need teaching brothers, and with God's help, we are going to have them. Jean-Baptiste's death will not have been in vain. Before he knew it, he was back in Lavala. He ran immediately to the little hamlet of Larev, just down the path from Lavala. He wanted to talk to the young man he had befriended since coming to Lavala, Jean-Marie Grandjean, the disillusioned veteran from Napoleon's army and disastrous wars. He asked him 
Will you help me? And there were more. On January 2nd, 1817, a little over two months since Jean-Baptiste's death, the idea of establishing the Marist brothers became a reality. The first two brothers took possession of the house at Lavala. The rest, as they say, is history. Today, there are Marists in over 80 countries around the world. What about you? Do you think you could help? Champagne has a question for you too. Will you help me?